Well, I got this red maple. I don't know if I forgot to turn the camera on or if it was on photo, but it's too bad I missed it because I really explained how to do a, a swing cut with a with a sizz wheel. A Dutchman. Dutchman is this. It's when you got all the hold wood on the tension side of the tree. So this tree wanted to go over, straight forward down over that bluff. So this is compression wood. This is like a jack stand. You jack up a car, right? This wood is in compression. It's holding the tree up on the front, on the toe. This is the heel, and it's like a chain or a rope. This is in tension. It's being pulled up. The way the tree wants to go forward, and this wood's being pulled. In the center, the heartwood is a gradient, okay? It's, a, it's almost neutral. <clears throat> now, this right here, this little relief pie cut, is what people call a sizz wheel. And its purpose is to lengthen this fiber. Anytime a fiber is lengthened, it bends over a longer radius and it resists tearing off for a sharper and sharper bend degree. This right here is left so that there's a pad of wood that acts like a wedge. So the first thing I did when I come in with this saw, I come in here and I hit this thing fast. This is the compression side. It wants to pinch on the bar. You gotta have a high power saw. You come in and and you rip fast and you're ready to yank out. As soon as you feel a little drag on that bar, yank that damn saw out. Because that tree is going to close on your bar. And then you're going to be unbolting your power head, looking for another, and looking like a like you don't know what you're doing, like amateur hour. <clears throat> so, first you sever all this compression wood, and you get your butt out of there. Then, you come around, and you plunge, mindful that the tip is going to want to get pinched in here. So when you, you come in cutting like this, you don't let that tip get in that zone. You come back here and you start cutting for this notch, because my notch was in here to send the tree right there. It went exactly where it was told to. So you plunge in there and you back out, plunge in there and back out. And give it a few seconds because the kerf is gonna close. So the next time you plunge, you're gonna recut the kerf. You're gonna keep cutting a trench that your bar can keep staying in. Now this side has closed up. So it can't close any further, but you can keep machining wood out of that spot. So you cut in your notch, right? So I had this angle and this angle, a conventional, not a Humboldt. And a sizz wheel doesn't work with a Humboldt. So the next thing, a Humboldt is when you have a flat cut here and an undercut right there. So this was a flat cut here and an undercut on top, a conventional notch. Then we come in, plunge in vertical right here. That's why you see that sprocket tip is, there's a pocket down in there. So you plunge in vertical about halfway across. Then you come in with the bar like this and you cut that little wedge out this gives you maximum flexibility in that chain of wood but it doesn't allow the tree to go forward because it's closed up so there's still compression on that front side then we come across here and without getting pinched it's the same deal this is the pinch zone so we come across here with the tip and we cut us a new a new hole and we anytime we need to sever up in this direction we do it with a plunge Okay, a plunge and a back out, a plunge and a back out, a plunge and a back out. Do not cut too much out of this. It should be double the thickness of what you'd expect from a full hinge. So if you said, oh, I need a one inch full hinge, then you need a two to three inch pie back here. This pie, this wedge, we took the material off this side and we added it to this side. That is your Dutchman. This is your sizz wheel. It's just a, it's an accessory, okay? And the sizz wheel, includes this pad right here. You need this pad. Now a soft Dutchman would be, or an ultra soft or whatever, would be when you cut little fish gills in here so that this thing kind of closes, but it also can compress that and lean forward. And that's used by super good cutters for getting a tree to come out and clear a tree it's hooked in and then roll around that way. But that tree wanted to go there and we got it more, there's 90. We got it about 110, 120 it slung further than I expected. That maple is pretty flexy. That's a red maple. Oh, Lordy. And that bluff is right there. Right there. Matter of fact, here we go. Yeah. That was lackluster. This hefty tree with triple top was very much weighted and already actually inter intertwined with the tops in that tree. So I couldn't have the slightest bit of forward lean or it would tie up in that one and I would have a real problem. 
<clears throat> this one here was another another uh, swing Dutchman with a sizz wheel. You can actually see there's actually a crack line right through here. So first we sever out this and you know we, we got everything on the compression side on the toe side everything we can before the tree sets down on our bar. So we do it as fast as we can, not some low power dull saw. This is a sharp hot rod saw. Rant, rips through here and yanks out before the tree realizes and starts setting down. And I put a little wedge in on this corner so it wouldn't close up. Because like I said, I couldn't have it leaning forward <clears throat> any more than it was. Come in here with a regular conventional um, notch to throw it up the hill. <laughs> come in and do the sizz wheel to lengthen out this fiber and then I came in and whittled in here and slowly established that remaining fiber and set another wedge over in this spot so one in here one in here this one was trying to keep it off that tree and I put a chunk of uh, wood in here so that as it rolled it would kind of have to climb onto that step and swing itself even further up and now I had that wedge here, wedge here, and then I come in with this bar and I kind of just glide down. You can see the orange peel. I kind of glide down the side of that wedge a little bit. They're consumable. And then eat, plunge, plunge in here and back out and plunge in here and back out and just kind of whittle and eat this up. And I'm beating on that pile of wedges, those two wedges I'm beating on them. The tree's just not really going, but I can't afford to take any more out of here. So what I've done to get it more flexible <clears throat> was put this vertical relief so there's one vertical removal you know there's a there's a, a wedge that's been removed from this vertical wall and then there's another separation that's been plunged in here and that allows this whole tab to bend over more and it actually started to tear the stump there's a tear tear line right here where it started to peel the whole stump out but that cord of wood right there it's like a chain now the tree's standing so everything is severed and the only thing holding it from going forward is this chain. But once you can get it lifted to go off balance, that chain will stay anchored and it'll swing the tree around. So it'll like that. And that's how your sizz wheel swinging Dutchman works. And this is what it's for. Because right on the other side of that green right there is a straight down. Vertical. I'm a little nervous to even get near it. Honestly. It kind of looks like there's a deer run right here. Straight down. Well, maybe, maybe we'll live on the edge a little bit. Is that far enough? That's some cliffs right there, buddy. Yep, so tomorrow I'll finish out the rest of this. Whew. Standing in the treetops. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. God bless you and praise the Lord.